Here's an artist who lets it rip on the canvas, but yet puts together a performance piece, an afternoon, a matinee, a dance, a very thought out program here. How does this work? The artist in the studio and the artist coming out of the studio. If you really think about it, if you really look, look at, the, uh, at the paintings, they, they don't simply let it rip. There are no accidents in those paintings. Uh, only uh, occasions in, uh, which, uh, when they're not falling into place, are made to fall into place, like a Saturday night, like a Sunday matinee. Um, the uh, organization may come from a different place, uh, but it is still organization, right? and it still actually does come from the same basic place, the right side of the brain, uh, the, the left side of the brain. The, uh, the, right, the right side, if the left side is kibitzing while the right side is working. Uh, <laughs> on a, in an event like this, the, uh, the, uh, the right side is doing the kibitzing uh, because it's the left side that's organizing this whole structure to present what the right side has been has, uh, set into motion. So, so um, what you just said, that there's that inspirational part, that open part, that running, streaming part. But is there, where does the logic come in when you're painting these kinds of abstract, you know, explosive works? Where does that logic side come in? It's sort of, um, to me it's a play between the conscious and the unconscious. It's like you, you set the elastic band with a certain goal somewhere in space. It doesn't matter where you set it, but you need to set it somewhere, otherwise life is without any purpose and beginning and end. But then the trick is that within that space, you can allow the unconscious creativity to come in and, and fill the space. So there's a structure that you set out and then you start just playing with it and allow the creative mind to come in. But because it's sort of preset, you sort of know where you're going to sail to. It's almost like you want to go on a trip and you set, the, um, you set the place where you want to arrive. But you're not going to have any judgment about how you're going to get to your goal and what sort of vehicle you use and when you will get there. You just know you will get there. And when you use that process, and this is actually an important part for me of, of the book that I wrote, that I feel that I, I came to realize that we feel we're in this very linear world where everything is moving in a certain way and we're now in the year 2010 and all that. But I came to realize it's, it's different for everybody. There's people that are living 5000 BC, there's people that are living in the future. It's, it's not, and that's also a problem in the art world, that it's been in such a linear space where the idea was every time we've discovered something, now we need to go to the next thing. You know, we had the, the last major developments were probably Picasso in the, in the 20th century. And after that, it's sort of all gone, so where are we going now? But I think now we're at this place where the challenge is to go inward and start rediscovering and make it much more about the process itself and the discoveries rather than these external linear sort of processes that we try to get to. So the book is dealing with that. It's, it's not just about the art. It's, I have a feeling that we're in such an incredibly perplexing and confusing time that it's the creative people that need to get out of their studios into the world because I think they can give an inspiration to a world that is totally confused and doesn't quite know what to do. And the interesting thing is that something I never had expected with this book to happen is that I'm starting to be asked by corporations to come and talk about creativity. Um, universities want me to come in because I think people do realize that they're in a box that is framed, that is too limiting and that there is to be a different way to start thinking to free that up. And that goes exactly how you use your brain. It's all there. But if you start with the intellectual part and you already frame it, and then you have to squeeze in a little bit of creativity in there, then you're going to have a lot of trouble. And that doesn't quite work. And I think that's the Western world is coming to the place now where they realize it doesn't work. You know, whether you look in terms of energy resources, where it's finite and it doesn't work, or any other area, it has to be redefined. And in that sense, I think this is an incredibly exciting time because people are more open than ever before to explore that. May I say something to that? The, uh, the, the greater recognition among everybody from psychologists to uh, uh, business schools that uh, the emphasis on uh, achieving goals uh, uh, philosophically as, as well as uh, practically is not sufficient. 
that uh, the emphasis should be on solving problems. In other words, being responsive to what is what comes up in front of you, rather than what is uh, what, what is distantly there. You can have a goal set up. Uh, you can you can set out to uh, paint a uh, you know a, a, a six by six painting with uh, with a lot of blues and greens in it. But uh, but the problems that come up are which greens, which blues, uh, what goes on what side of the canvas, uh, what what kind of space do you want to create? Uh, do you want to achieve? Uh, achieve? You know, in other words, every problem is a little goal-lit in uh, on the way to uh, the the finish line. It's uh, and so so uh, if you lose sight of all the steps in between and the pleasure in taking those steps, uh, the goal is uh, is simply product. Let me just do this, though. and I think that's natural for us humans to to think that and want to know. Religiously, or you know, spiritually, in some way, or artistically, <coughs> what is my purpose? What is my goal? Can you touch on that? <laughs> having said what you said, having said what you said. Well, I think the secret of life is to be here. <laughs> to be here. But that sounds so simple. But most of us are not here. I'm not here either. I mean, I think you're still in the conceptual space as as human mankind, and. When, and that's why I started studying a lot of psychology, but also cellular biology, to start realizing, and that's why I love the piece that Hillary did, because for so long we felt like, oh, that's biology, it's not important. It's very important to understand who we are, and, and it's very optimistic to, to see how the brain has its plasticity, and it can actually change and rework. And for me that is a great message, because I feel we are so conditioned in a cultural way, in a way, the sort of family we grow up in, that shaves off so much of our original selves already that by the time you're ready to speak and to think and go into the world, well, just because you have a name doesn't mean you're a person. It, you're probably just put back to a little square. And, but to know that if you go into that process and you start to go into the, the heart wire and you start to analyze that, that you are able to get into that box, that there's actually an ability to rewire, just as you can rewire the brain after a stroke, you can rewire your conscious and unconscious mind to bring more creativity into yourself. That is the area where I feel that artists have an incredibly important role to play in society. They should come in and really inspire people. You know, I mean, for myself, I know that the people that, for instance, have my work that keep telling me it really truly inspires them. It's not just a piece of decoration on the wall. It's it's a living entity that has a certain frequency because of its color and composition, and it, it has a much more active role than people realize. So, a society that's going to embrace more art and creativity into itself and puts less into the defense systems um, is going to be a much healthier society. Even a biologist will tell you that if you get into a state of fear, your body will start draw all its blood from your organs, which has helped to feed you and to let you grow, into the very vital areas that's just about protection. And the blood flow goes literally from your forebrain to your hindbrain. What that means is it makes you stupid. Basically, it, you're going very basic defense mechanisms, and that's the world that we live in right now. And we artists need to get out of our studios and out of our dance studios and really go actively into the world and inspire the world with a different way of being able to see what life could be.